join my colleagues in the debate in support of the motion that has been presented by the committee of the central funds of the National Assembly in respect of 26 constituencies in various counties in this country, Mombasa, Kilifi, Kwale, Taita Taveta, Lamu, and Tana River. For the financial year 2013-2014, 2014-2015, 2015-2016, that has been laid on the table of the House. Honorable Speaker, if you look at the financial years in which we are reviewing, it's, it's a symptom of the challenges we have had as, as, as uh, the National Assembly to execute our mandate under Article 95. Honorable Speaker, one of the mandates of the National Assembly is oversight. And oversight is uh, exhibited through review of audited accounts of the various government funds that have been disbursed after being appropriated by this House. Honorable Speaker, there is, an ex there is obviously a basic rule that when the matter delays too much or justice delayed, is justice denied. We are looking at 2013, 2014, up to 2016 financial years. Honorable Speaker, that is several years, a whooping almost six or so years behind schedule. Even if there was a misappropriation, even if there was some kind of unprofessional misconduct, uh, Honorable Speaker, it becomes extremely difficult to bring the persons who are in charge to account for their misdeeds, for, for their misbehavior, for their acts of commission and omission. And therefore, it's my running call to the, fund, the Central Fund Accounts Committee and I'm glad the chair is here with us today, to find mechanisms to ensure that all the constituency accounts are audited or they have reviewed by the, national, uh, by the committee and presented to this, to this National Assembly for debate, review, and adoption. So that at any given time, we are up to date in respect of our mandate as members of the National Assembly. Six years down the line, Honorable Speaker, even if there's misappropriation, the high, rate, the high turnover rate of the fund account managers becomes practically impossible to assess whether there's a value for money or not. I therefore call upon the National Assembly to accord the committee the necessary facilitation, the necessary resources, both financial and manpower and technical manpower to ensure that they review these reports and bring them to book. Honorable Speaker, it's also important for us, the National Assembly, we dispense of these accounts because the normal narrative that's peddled outside there by the media, by being misinformed the civil society, and many other busybodies is as if the members of parliament are the managers of these accounts. That's far from the truth. Honorable Speaker, the persons charged with accounting for this money is the fund account manager, the district accountant, and the constituent fund accounts committee, in totality with the CEO of the board. Members of parliament are not signatories anywhere. Members of parliament do not make any direct decisions in how the funds are utilized. So I want to urge the fourth, the fourth estate, the media, so to speak, that when they report, let them report objectively, dealing, knowing who are the people responsible for any misuse and for any misappropriation of public funds. Honorable Speaker, and I find this is a malady that affects even our colleagues here. They still have the mentality that the alpha and the omega of the CDF fund. Members of parliament have no role to play at all in day-to-day -day management of the fund. Therefore, any audit queries that are raised here, we do it through an oversight, and indeed you are at, you are at, at liberty to summon the CDFC committee plus the fund account manager
to ask them to brief you on why there is a qualified report or whatever report in respect of any constituency. I want to ask my colleagues to desist tying themselves around the hip with the CDF because whenever something goes wrong, the media will pick it up and the courts will always use it to frustrate the national, C the, uh, national government CDF committee. That said and done, Honorable Speaker, the impact of CDF cannot be gainsaid. What CDF has done to this country since it was in, in, uh, enacted in 2003 is something that if we had, had developed this principle and discarded this, this funny thing called Harambe, this country would have gone very many, many years. Honorable Speaker, me and you and many colleagues here are called, are invited in many churches to undertake Harambe's to build churches. But you go back there after six months or one year, they have invited somebody else to conduct a Harambe to undertake the same work that we are supposed to do. That's what we are simply, the, the conclusion is so simple. The inference is so simple that Harambe spirit, as noble as it was at the beginning, at the start, at the beginning of this country, lost it is meeting a lot meaning along the way, and therefore that's why it was apt for us to bring the country to, to initiate uh, the CDF committee, CDF approach that has served to transform infrastructure. When it was able to do everything under the sun, you would find most water projects in constituencies were initiated by CDF. Many health facilities were initiated by CDF. Many economic empowerment programs were initiated by CDF. After the 2010 Constitution, Honorable Speaker, the only visible development you can see in a constituency that you go are those that have been built or funded and supervised by NG CDF. And that also brings you into question. Devolution was always supposed to be improve the livelihood and welfare of the people of Kenya. Many all over, wherever you go, many Kenyans will ask you, what happened to the devolved fund that comes through the counties? What happened? We want to urge the governors and the county assemblies who oversight the governors and the CEC to borrow the model of CDF so that we are able to develop this country equally and fairly and equitably. Honorable Speaker, the debate has now started to rage. One man, one shilling, one vote. When we punch champions uh, BBI, that the, the, the concept was the hallmark. Many people demonized us and said BBI is bad. Now they are feeling the pinch, and that's why at any given time, when you legislate, legislate for prosperity, not for today, not to sort out today's problems, not for the basics of today, for political experience of today, because later, sooner than later, whatever you are saying and whatever statements you are making will come to haunt you as we as at any given time. To not take long. Honorable Speaker, schools are opening for second term. GSS is in progress. Many of us know the teething problem of GSS. With the delayed disbursement of funds from National Treasury, it means the challenges we have in GSS will remain with us forever for many, many years to come. It will therefore mean this particular academic year, those boys and girls who don't beautiful uniform are wasting their time in classrooms and they, that's lost opportunity. We want to urge the National Treasury for the sake of the children of this country, for the sake of accelerated development of this country, please do all that you can to release the funds so that we are able, a constituency f a committees are able to allocate and expend those funds before the end of the financial year so the Republic of the people of Kenya can see value for money. Money is of no use being retained in accounts. Money is of no use being kept somewhere. We want to see rapid development. And Honorable Speaker, all over the world, the government is the biggest spender. When the government is not spending, the economy contracts. Taxes are not being collected. So it's a paradox that the government does not spend and wants to collect money. With those few remarks, Honorable Speaker, 
I support the motion and I urge the committee to move with the speed, ensuring the next, before the end of the year, we are almost in 2022-2023. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Very well, the Honorable Peter Olechapong.